This episode of Quilt Makers Lessons in Creativity is brought to you by Northcott, cottons that feel like silk, and Foff, perfection starts here. Hi, welcome to Quilt Makers Lessons in Creativity. This is series number three. I am Jenny K. Parks. If you want to know more about me, you can go to my website, JennyKQuilts.com, and we're going to dig into this stuff right here. This beautiful quilt behind me is called Let Freedom Ring. It was designed by Carolyn Beam, and it is the traditional log cabin block. So we're going to start with that and take you through how to make this block today. I'm gonna take you through the whole way. If you see here, I have it laid out. I'm a big fan of laying it out and making sure you got it just right before you start to sew. The log cabin is a great block for beginners because for one, there's so much variety, which you're gonna see over the whole series. But also, it's a pretty forgiving block. And so it's, it's a good one. In fact, that's the very first one that I made. So I'm gonna show you all different ways to do it, but today we're gonna to make the main block and we're gonna start in the center. Usually a log cabin block, well, it will. It will have one or two little center blocks. Uh, traditionally, it's either red or yellow. I've also seen that. But you know, now you can mix it up and do whatever, whatever you want to. That's right, we're gonna be creative here. So we're starting with this one, and I'm gonna take these two pieces and put them together. Now, if you want all the information on this pattern and how to make this block exactly, you can check out the uh, Quilt Makers Magazine, the July-August issue, and that has all the measurements and everything to help you out. So first, I'm gonna take these. I've got my center, and I've got my little side, the first side block, and we're gonna put them all together here. Line them up. Oop, oop, oop. My fingers aren't working today. There we go. I got some little thread tangled up, but that's all right. See, open it up, nice block like that. And we're going to press, I think uh, we're gonna press in this direction, so as we go along, we're gonna press everything out to what we've just sewn. So let me get that here for us. Hold that still, hang on there. Beautiful. And then we're gonna keep moving around. So we're gonna go in a counterclockwise manner and. So our next one is going to be this one up here. Let me flip it over on top. And so. And when you're doing this, you want to be aware too that, um, you know, that your seams, you're sewing them down as they need to be sewn. Oop, stop there, cut that thread. Almost just kept going, kept yakking at you. You want to make sure that the seams are sewn down like this. That's just going to work better for you. But if you if you do make a mistake, I mean, not that I ever have, but if you do make a mistake, you can take a little tiny clip in the seam allowance, just a little snip, and make that seam allowance go the direction that it needs to go. All right, continue and press working our way out. Sometimes you can tell that the fabric you're using is rebellious. It doesn't wanna, it doesn't wanna behave. And sometimes it's really beneficial uh, to starch it, if that's the case, and also to set the seam, to kind of put that iron down there for just a moment or two. I think it helps flatten the thread and it helps tell the fabric, this is the way you're gonna go, and to make it lay down there. So continuing around our circle, this is our next block our next little patch to put on there. Line that up. Oops, stop a second, I wanna make sure I'm, there we go. those thread cutters, don't you? They're awesome. I love that. See, look at that. I, I just love when a block is starting to come to life. A personality is starting to develop. I love it. Okay, let me press this fella. And again, we're continuing to press all the way out. You don't want to press 
too hard. You don't want to be too forceful and aggressive. You want to persuade it. This is the way we're going to go, and this is how you're going to look. See? See it starting to come out? So our next one, ha, you guessed it. It's that one right there. Pull that up. Now, as you can see, here, I want to show you this. I'm going to have to be mindful of this seam so that I don't hook it up, so I don't give myself a little problem. So I'm just going to be aware of that as I sew. All right. And I can feel it underneath there, and I know it's going in the right way, but if it wasn't, I could stop now and change it. All right, let's go to town. So I had, I had heard that the center of the log cabin block is supposed to be like the fire in the window saying, you know, kind of welcoming you home, like in a traditional cabin. I always thought that was a neat story. All right, press this one. Make that nice and flat. And I, when I lay it back down again, I make sure I'm keeping the right orientation as I go along. Because if I lay it down like this, it's going to mess me up. So keeping that, and I always like to keep a pattern handy right there so I can see it and refer to it. But I, I keep laying it down exactly at the same orientation, and that will help you to do that. The more habits, the more tricks like that that you can build into what you're doing, the better results you're going to get, the more confident you're going to be with it, the more you know, you're going to get technical details down so you can be more creative, which is part of what we're doing here, right? OK, you can see this is the next block, or excuse me, the next patch to be sewn on. And again, I want to be mindful of those little seams. Don't want to get it away from me. Mm -mm. Beautiful. And see, once you get a cut, I find the cutting, it always takes a lot longer than I expect. <laughs> I think it's, oh, I can do that. That's really easy. And then it, it seems to take twice as long as I expect it to do. But I'm telling you, once you get the cutting for this done, it, it, it's, they're just going to start to fly into place. So there we have our proper orientation. Next one is this one right here. Making sure that seam is down. I can feel it under there. Good, good, good. Oh, hang on. It's slipping just a little bit on me. There we go. I do just love this. There's so many creative things that you can do with a log cabin block. So many interesting details and just the way the settings that you can do, they just change it so much. See here we're doing, which is really traditional to doing a, a light and a dark side. That's the, that's the format we're using here. But you know, you can, you can do it however you want to. In fact, I will show you throughout this series some other really interesting ways to set that up. And I'm making sure those are down, my seams are lying in the right way. Come over and press. Now, I've heard people say that quilting is a sedentary activity, but I'm telling you, if you're sewing something like this and you put your ironing board in the other room, you're going to be moving a lot. You're going to get plenty of exercise. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to line it up here. I've got that one. I have just four, four strips left. So it looks to me like this. I just pressed this one. See, we have to keep lining up. So this is the next one that's going to go on there. Now, if you have a lot of trouble with getting those seams to lie flat, you could certainly flip this over and 
It'd be like this. You could sew it from this direction if that's going to give you a lot of problems. I like to say, you make the method work for you. You don't work for the method. So I might show you a technique or I might do it a certain way and you try it a few times and it doesn't work for you. That's fine. I won't be offended. I totally understand. You have to find the way that's, that's going to work for you. That, that's going to give you the results that you want, right? Because that's the main point with quilting, is getting the results that you want to have. All right. Pressing that out, making sure that's going to obey. We're almost done. I mean, you can see behind me just the way that the lights and the darks are laid out with each other and the, and the different angles that they're put on, how dynamic you can make it. It's not just a simple log cabin, although a simple log cabin is beautiful. All right, line this up. We'll continue to work our way around. We're almost done, man. Yay! Mind in that seam. Making sure I'm... Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna get it just right. And I don't say perfect anymore. I tried to be perfect, but perfect lives in an entirely different town from me. So I can get it just right. That's as good as I can do. Okay. So I've just put on this strip. I'm gonna reorient myself a little bit. I'm gonna press it. And you can see I'm using this lovely orange thread. But you know, when you're at home, do what you want. Use the thread that's gonna work best for you. I use it orange on here, so I wanna make sure that you can see it so that it's very clear. All right, here we are. It looks like I have this one on the top. See, it just comes together so quickly. And you could do, you could take um, pre-cuts, right? And you just cut a center and start working with pre-cuts all the way around. You could come up with something awesome. You don't have to necessarily go by the particular shapes and, and uh, widths that are in this one. You can just branch out on your own. We press this one. And in fact, talking about thread, I usually, typically, just buy a big cone of gray thread, and that's like 90% of all my sewing is with that gray thread. It's not like clothes where it has to match exactly what you're wearing. It doesn't have to do that. And I'm gonna do this one. Wait a minute. You're gonna laugh. <laughs> I forgot to put this out and to lay it out completely. See, see why it's important to do that? There we go. Okay, now, see, that's gonna make a lot more sense visually. See why you need patterns? Okay, anyways, enough about that. <laughs> I'm gonna do this one here. Beautiful. Again, minding those little seam allowances. I guess I was so excited to have it all. I forgot to put everything out there. Cut my thread. All right. Press it. Beautiful. And now, truly the last one. <laughs> this one's going to go on and flip up right there. So you can see, like I was saying, once you get the strips cut out, you really can fly together pretty quickly. I'm gonna make sure to line things up. And if you notice, I haven't pinned every place. I know some people feel like they need to pin everything. I say pin to your level of comfort, like driving in the snow. Go as fast as you feel comfortable with. But really, with just laying these strips down, you don't need to pin too much. Maybe try flying free. No pins. 
be daring. <laughs> okay, let's press this and you'll see this wonderful block in all its glory. Ah. There we go. I have my proper orientation. I have all my darks and lights together. And I want to show you, I'm going to show you that little trick here because I did look at right there. I made a little goof. I did not get the seam allowance just right. So I'm going to take my scissors. Let me rotate a little bit here. And I'm just going to clip, not all the way through or anything like that, but just enough of the seam allowance so that's gonna lay down and behave. Kind of get to lay down a little more flat. Oop. Hang on there. So you can see if you have the seam completely folded, if you have the seam folded the wrong way, how this little trick would do that. I was showing it to one gal in a class I was teaching, and she said, Oh, that's it, that's all I needed to learn. You saved me so much time. All right, and we'll just press that out, and that'll be a little less obtrusive, a little less in the way. In, in what you're doing. Look at that. And you notice how all the seams are pressed out in this direction. Great way to do it. Beautiful. All right. So that's your basic log cabin block from this quilt, Let Freedom Ring. In the next episode, we're going to talk about the all important quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to give you a test to take it, uh, to try and see if you are getting it, and a couple different tricks just in case you aren't. So I will see you next time. Be sure to join me there. Thanks. This episode of Quilt Makers Lessons in Creativity is brought to you by Northcott, cottons that feel like silk, and Foff, perfection starts here.